back out on the track, actually a car out on the track. Kurt Busch has made his way out onto the track and part of the Stuart Haas racing family. I, I don't care if it's one car, 40 cars, Rick, I'm ready to see a car on the racetrack. Kurt Busch, surprisingly, zero wins in Coda International Speedway. I mean, it shocks me. This, you talk about aggressive drivers, emotional drivers, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, the list is pretty long. But, but Kurt seems to have success in everything. Ran the Indy 500, knows how to drive. It, it really shocks me to think that he hasn't found his way to victory lane. 28 career wins for Kurt Busch, a native of Las Vegas, Nevada, and none of them have come at Daytona. Old talent, 61. Yes. Yeah. Kurt Busch. Older brother to Kyle Busch, who won the championship a year ago. Kurt Busch also has a championship under his belt. But winless in plate races, and he has the most starts of the active drivers. What's interesting about that list is they all had seconds. Yes. So that makes it worse. Because you go okay. you go home and you're yes. like, well, I almost won, but I never did because I finished second. So, you know, every one of these drivers has put themselves in an opportunity to win the race. They all feel like they can. And, you know, this is, we talk about it all the time, Daytona is an opportunity for smaller teams to get a win. It's an opportunity, you know, everybody with this race starts has a chance to win this race. And, and if you haven't won, you want to be a road course winner. You want to be a plate run race winner. You want to be a short track winner. You want to win every category that you can win. I promise you, he wants to knock that off. And, you know, I really expect to see multiple areas. You see here some major stars. Kind of a little self-clearance is what we call that. Yeah, James Gilbert made a little clearance on the car. But I expect teams to have multiple approaches to this practice. As I walked through the garage today, the crew chiefs, I ran into the 18 car. How did they feel about February? Man, they ran pretty good in February. Looking forward to July. We ran into the crew chief for the 22 talk board said, oh, excuse me. That February was an issue. They were out of the gas off turn two, very tight. So I think there's a lot of teams in the garage here that need racetrack time to work on their cars. So we're going to see a lot of guys with weather in the area. I think a lot more urgency earlier in this practice. And you can hear it. You can hear the car. You can hear Jamie Red Hall. Still. And the lightning strikes have come back. And you hear. The RPMs go down on Jamie McMurray's car. Just two miles away was the lightning strike and actually a little bit of precipitation on that camera as we're riding along with Jamie. So a little bit of rain. The lightning is the reason for the caution. Uh, the possibility exists, though, that precipitation will be another issue that these drivers will have to deal with. Kyle Larson, another driver that We've touted as being talented and yet hasn't been able to find victory lane in his Sprint Cup Series career. Right along with Dale Earnhardt Jr., another driver who has been incredible at restrictor plate racetracks, but this year, surprisingly, has not been able to find the handle literally on the cars because he spun out twice on his own at restrictor plate racetracks. Let's go into the garage and Marty Snyder. Well, Rick, one of the big questions coming into this race was what car would Dale Earnhardt Jr. bring? Remember the infamous Amelia car they had won a couple of times with that Steve Letarte had a hand in building as well. Well, that car obviously did not make it through the Talladega race, so the car they brought was actually the car that they ran at the shootout earlier this year. You see Jr. coming into the garage area right now to park that car, and, and a lot of teams brought different cars this time around. You think of Chase Elliott, they had the car that sat on the, both poles at restricted places this year, but they brought a different car this time around. Steve, you can talk about this. The teams brought cars with more downforce. That's usually not what you want in a restrictor plate race, but they won it this time because handling is going to be huge on Saturday night. They learned that here in February. Yeah, Marty. You know, Daytona and Talladega is definitely Dale Hurt Jr.'s strongest racetracks, and he's proven it time and time again. But you mentioned it this year. They haven't gone the way Dale Jr. had hoped they would go. And I really think last year they found a formula that worked for this race team. He was able to keep his track position, be very aggressive, and win those races. But this year, as he's lost his track position, the car just doesn't have the handling it needs. It's really been a common thread through February. But the 88, and specifically, Jeff, twice really by itself just because the air ended up in an accident yeah and dale jr is so good at drafting i mean he, he is one of the very best no doubt about it all the drivers talk about it this is what dale jr does so well watch him catch the 11 car he's, he's thrown up on the 11 car he jumps up on the outside gets his left front fender on the 11 
right rear quarter panel. Watch what this does. It will actually pull the 11 car back from the 22. The 88 doesn't get faster, but the 11 car gets slower. Now you've created a gap. And through, with that, you now have created an opportunity. Yeah, you see now Dale Jr. feels he still has a run. He's going to not take the position in front of the 11, but try to get another spot. He sees Joe Logano up here. He's going to try to close in on the right rear quarter panel. Another signature move pulls the 22 off the bumper of the 3. Most importantly here, this has created a gap for the 88. Now he can get back in line and protect those two positions he just gained. Yeah, that's what, that's what he does so well. But here's the problem. And here you see he makes a big run on the three car, gets to his quarter panel, slows the three down, gets way away. Watch him try to pull it out on the 14. When he does, it stacks air on the front of the 88, and around he goes. So the thing that makes Dale Jr. so good is he's so aggressive. He gets after it. But in this situation, off that car gained tons of front downforce, and when it did, he could not keep up with the race car. So this is something that this team is going to have to work on. Look at his hands. He was he was spun out. You can see he had lost control. This team is going to have to make these cars when Dale Jr. can drive it because his aggressiveness is what makes him good. And the issue is, Jeff, it's just not that single incident. Then we move forward to Talladega earlier this year, and the 88 in a little bit different situation here is kind of three wide of a loose pack. You see, there really, in my opinion, should be enough air on this car, but he's in a bad position with the two on the right rear quarter panel, Tony Stewart on his left front headlight, and the car just gets loose instantly. The 88 finds himself spinning again, collects his teammate of the five of Casey King. So that's two restricted plate races this year. Really two different situations where the 88 has not had the grip in, in unique chances and he has a crash. To win here, you have to have fast car that the 88 always has, but you have to handle. So just moments ago, you told me more downforce for the 88 trying to eliminate situations like that? But, well, so look, here's the, here's the balance. If you take downforce off, you also take drag off. And when you do that, you make the car faster, but you also make it not handle as well. So we've seen situationally <coughs> that Dale Jr. does not have enough grip. The easiest way to get that back is to dial a little more downforce in it. But the negative of that is it makes the car slower. So there's always this balance about how aggressive do we want to be aerodynamically? How do we want to, how aggressive do we be with the setup to make the car go fast versus making it drive well? As a driver, man, you want both. Right? You want to have both. You want the thing to drive well, you want it to be fast, you want all of that. But when the tracks get slick and you lose grip, you have to start to make you have to start to make compromises. And how much compromise can you make and still be fast enough to win the race? Kelly Stavis, the youngest member and teammate of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s uh, team, is Chase Elliott. How are they doing as they prepare for this practice? Well, Chase has been sitting patiently behind the wheel of the 24 car. He was just getting ready to roll out of the garage when that last round of lightning struck. And Steve, you were saying earlier how you suspected some of these teams really had some handling that they would want to work out. Well, this is certainly one of those teams I spoke with. Chase's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, this morning, and I said, what's your strategy for practice today? And he said, look, we want to run as much as we can. We want to get as much practice in as we can. He said, the frustrating thing is, you come out here to Daytona in February for 10 days for speed weeks, but no one really practices. So we get out there for the race, and we have all sorts of handling issues. You'll remember in the 500, Chase started on pole, but wrecked really early in that race. So they want to get as much as they can. This lightning certainly not helping their cause. Um, as they really want to work things out, especially with the different uh, weather conditions that they'll face here in July, June, I should say, versus what they saw in February. One of the things that obviously we see you know, Chase out was early on in the 500 earlier this year in February, uh, ending his day, and actually they worked very diligently to get the car back out for a few laps, but the, the difference today potentially could be that there's cloud cover over this racetrack, which means a little closer to what they would experience on Saturday night. Yeah, you know, the problem with, it seems, when you show up in February, there's not been a lot of cars on the racetrack. The track tends to have more grip. When you come here in July, whether it's sunny, whether it's at night, it just never seems to have the grip. Even when the sun goes down, the air temperature is very high, the grip level is very low. And what, what's remarkable as we watch both of those replays, to me, is the 88 and the 24 very similar crashes. And I know Hendrick Motorsports works very hard in the restricted play program. They work very hard on qualifying. That car sat on the pole in February, so we know it had great straight line speed, which normally means not a lot of drag, not a lot of downforce. We talk about new cars, both for the 24 and the 88 this weekend, are new for both of those teams. 
I think maybe they'll take a different approach. It'd be interesting of qualifying to see if they still have the straight line speed to qualify in the front row. You know, Jeff talked about compromises. It's hard to find one without the other. Maybe give up a little bit in qualifying to try to have something a little more secure. Yeah, you, you think about Chase Elliott in, in running the, his first Daytona 500. That's the Daytona 500, and 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 that Sprint Cup car drives different than an Xfinity car. It just does. And and without getting out and practice a lot, without having those big groups. So why don't people practice a lot? Because they're afraid they're going to get in wrecks. They're afraid they're going to damage their car. But the negative is. You take a guy like Chase Elliott, all his experiences from, are from other types of cars on this racetrack, not a sprint cup car. And I promise you they drive different. So uh, you've got to give him enough seat time to understand what he has. The biggest race in the sport, the Daytona 500, a lot of pressure added to the drivers as well. Again, we're under a red flag condition, lightning in the area at Daytona.